Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 17th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One reason why I like the Unix-ish operating systems is that, uh, well, uh, you sort of get out of the box a bunch of real useful command line utilities with the system. And, well, some of them are, of course, the popular web browsers wget and curl. Now, a normal user would probably never really use a command line browser like wget or curl or even links uh, as an example. But uh, for or a person like myself that likes to write little scripts and such, really useful and of course also useful for malicious code to download additional components. Now on Windows, you typically don't have uh, these browsers installed by default. But it's pretty easy to install them after the fact. And uh, there are pre-compiled binaries for Windows that uh, in particular power users often find quite useful. But so does malicious code. So we got a quick uh, diary here by Xavier. Xavier looked a little bit at, well, uh, can he find malware that sort of takes advantage of these more Unix-ish kind of command line browsers like curl and wget and he found a good number of them. Remember on Windows, you actually don't need to install these command line browsers. There's for example, bits admin and a number of other tools that can easily be used uh, to download files via HTTP. But uh, well, uh, I guess a little bit laziness, a uh, little bit probably also that the attacker is just familiar with these Unix tools that they will install them for you. Pretty easy to spot these command line browsers uh, based on the user agent. Yes, uh, the attacker can change the user agent often easily, but if you do some additional browser fingerprinting or such, it shouldn't be too hard to figure out that a user on your network just download a file using one of these command line browsers and there may be a good reason to double check what's going on. Xavier is also providing a simple sysmon rule to check if a user on your network is using wget.exe or curl.exe. That of course will help you if user agents got changed or if the user uses HTTPS. And yes, uh, you may end up with some false positives, like I mentioned, where legitimate users are just using these tools because they find them easy and simple to use to download legitimate files. And Kaspersky came across an interesting info stealer bot that actually borrowed a trick from good old computer viruses. If you are around this industry for a while, then you may remember that initially a computer virus was called a computer virus because similar to sort of a biological virus, it injected itself into valid binaries, typically by just appending itself to a valid binary, make it a bit more difficult to actually find the malicious code. And then also whenever that valid binary was executed, the malicious code was executed as well. This technique, sort of fell a bit to the wayside over the years, uh, even though many people still call malware viruses. I sometimes uh, still do that sort of out of habit. And uh, Kaspersky now find a sample of Kbot that does exactly what these old viruses did and that it attach itself to binaries. And then whenever you run the binary, you also run this bot. The bot itself is not really all that terribly remarkable. It steals your banking information. Uh, what's sort of a little bit odd is that it saves all the passwords and such that it finds in an RC6 uh, encrypted file, which of course makes it a little bit more difficult to, for example, detect uh, these files with standard data leakage monitoring software. And well, uh, we do have a new version of OpenSH, OpenSH 
8.2. And the reason I mention it is, well, they added one of my favorite features, FIDO and U2F support. Typically, these technologies have so far mostly been used for web applications. But yes, uh, these authentication standards are applicable to pretty much anything that authenticates, particularly if you already use public private key pairs like uh, SSH does. So kind of logical and really neat that OpenSH 8.2 supports this now. The little bit sad part is sometimes it takes quite a while for sort of these new OpenSH versions to trickle down into current uh, Unix uh, distribution. So we'll see how fast this uh, will get picked up. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.